Hey everybody, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I'm actually currently on the trail on Thanksgiving Day. Um, hopefully the noise isn't too loud because I'm just at a little local trail above Ogden. You can see those cars down there. It's absolutely beautiful out here. I just wanted to make a quick video about a question I keep getting from people. It seems that a lot of people are buying sleeping bags and end up sleeping a lot colder than what the sleeping bag is advertised. And there's a few reasons for that. There's a few potential reasons for that. So one of the big first reasons is there's not a great standardization for temperature ratings on your sleeping bags. So there's basically three categories of temperature ratings for bags. There's gonna be the comfort limit, the lower limit, and the extreme limit. A lot of times companies will use the extreme limit, some companies will use the lower limit, and very rarely a company will use the comfort limit. However, that's definitely something that you need to understand before you purchase a sleeping bag. A lot of times companies will advertise that a sleeping bag is a 15 degree sleeping bag, when in reality that 15 degree mark is their lower limit. That lower limit means it'll keep you at least warm enough to where you're not in terrible danger, but you will be super cold at 15 degrees. The main rating you wanna look for is the comfort rating. So next I'll get into probably the most common reason you're sleeping cold in your sleeping bag. And believe it or not, that reason is actually your sleeping pad and not your sleeping bag. A common misconception is that sleeping bags somehow generate heat. They do not generate heat. Sleeping bags capture heat. Most people underestimate the value of an insulated sleeping pad when you're sleeping in cold weather. The big reason your sleeping pad is so important is because when you're laying down on your back, the insulation on your sleeping bag is actually being compressed and is not insulating your back at all. And the way insulation works is it traps the heat lost by your body. So when that insulation is compressed, it's not doing a very good job of capturing that heat and the heat will just pass right through. But whenever that insulation is lofted, it does a better job of storing that heat for you. So with that being said, you wanna do your best to not compress that insulation by any means. So whenever you use a sleeping pad that's not rated for the temperatures you're in, you're actually losing all the heat that your sleeping bag's trying to build up to the ground. So it's extremely important that you use a properly rated sleeping pad as well as a properly rated sleeping bag. So unlike sleeping bags, sleeping pads use a system called the R value system. And what the R value is, is how well your sleeping pad resists losing heat to the ground. So the higher number R value you have, the warmer you'll sleep. Fortunately for us, recently a few companies came together to standardize the R value system because before it wasn't quite as accurate as they would have liked it to be, but now you can kind of bank on the R value of your pad being the holy grail. So the next one should be pretty obvious if you're having this issue, but it is a common issue, and that's your feet are getting cold when you're sleeping. And that can be for several different reasons. One of the big reasons is your sleeping pad isn't long enough, so your feet are falling off your sleeping pad. That becomes an issue because, like I said, your sleeping pad is where a lot of your heat is lost. So if your feet aren't on your sleeping pad, then you're gonna lose all that heat. One of the next reasons is your sleeping bag is too small. If you're a tall person and your sleeping bag is tight around your feet, you're gonna lose all of that heat because if that down or whatever type of insulation you have isn't lofted, it's not gonna insulate your feet. And that kind of goes with the rest of your body as well. If you notice your sleeping bag is tight around your shoulders or hips or whatever it may be, you're not getting insulated in those areas. So that can cause a pretty good loss of heat as well. Also, some people naturally just have cold feet. 
So if that sounds like it's you, what I would try to do is get some down booties and they're just little boots that you can slip on like socks and those will help provide an additional layer of insulation to your feet. The insulation type that you're using is also very important. If you're not using some sort of hydrophobic insulation, meaning it's not resisting water or it doesn't have a DWR coating to help it shed water, then another thing that could be happening is when your insulation gets wet, it also compresses and again, won't do a very good job of insulating you. And that leads me to probably the least common reason you're sleeping cold at night. And that is because your insulation is very dirty. Dirt, grime, oils from your body can compress that insulation and keep it from lofting properly, which again, will also keep you cold at night. I would say this is definitely probably the least common because this generally only happens if you use your sleeping bag very often or if you just get really dirty when you're backpacking and then get directly into your sleeping bag. If this is an issue for you, make sure that you get a product that's specifically meant for washing your insulation type. There's companies like Nick Wax and other companies out there that make specific washes for the insulation you're using. Make sure you read the instructions thoroughly because you can potentially ruin your gear by washing it. And then I guess lastly, if none of these other tips work for you, try exercising before you get into your sleeping bag at night or also you can boil some water and put it in something like a Nalgene bottle and stuff that in your sleeping bag with you because what's comfortable for me may not be comfortable for you. Some people are cold sleepers, some people are hot sleepers, and that's kind of just the nature of the human body. Not everybody's created the same, so people will have different experiences out there, which gets back into that temperature rating. Some companies may advertise that the comfort rating is 32 degrees or whatever, but you may not feel comfortable at that 32 degree mark because they generate those probably off of the average baseline and you may be a hot sleeper or a cold sleeper. So in all reality, you have to figure out what system works best for you. I always suggest trying your gear before you take it on a big backpacking trip. I have several trails that are pretty close to my house that I like to test gear on. They may not be very exciting for backpacking, but picking a trail that's pretty short and easy to get home from is really important because when you're testing something like a sleeping bag or new sleep system, if you get really cold at night, it can be dangerous or it can just be downright uncomfortable. And the last thing you wanna do is be 15 miles from the trailhead or 20 miles from the trailhead, even 10 miles from the trailhead and try to hike out and get home at three o'clock in the morning when it's you know, 20 degrees outside or whatever it might be because that can be a pretty dangerous situation, you know? So do yourself a favor and keep yourself safe. A common situation I see is friends inviting people who are not experienced on backpacking trips and they just tell them to go to REI, buy some gear and let's go backpacking. That's not great advice. So if you're a person who's been invited on a backpacking trip and you're not very experienced, make sure you learn everything you need to know before you go and don't get yourself into an uncomfortable situation. And likewise, if you're experienced and you're inviting less experienced people with you, make sure that they're gonna have a good time. Make sure that they understand the gear they're bringing. Don't let them get into a situation to where they just buy whatever looks nice and assume that it's gonna do the job because that's just not the case. When we bring people outdoors, we should be helping them have a good experience. We need to create a culture of love and respect for the outdoors. There can be a pretty big stigma of people not enjoying their time outdoors. A lot of that can come from misinformation or people just not doing a good job of showing people the outdoors the right way. I hope you've gained some valuable information from this video. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment if you have any other good tips for getting a good night's sleep on trail. Thank you guys. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving and I'll see you on the next video.